Hey, hello there. So today I'm looking at uh, question 778, a swim in rising water. We have a square m by n grid. Each uh, square value, uh, rho j colon, uh, rho i colon j, represents the elevation, the height, at the position i j. Now the rain starts to fall at time t. The depth of the water is t everywhere inside this grid. We can start to swim from a square to other four directionally adjacent square if and only if the elevation of both square, the source and target, individually are at the most t uh, and we can swim infinite distance in zero time and we have to stay within the boundary. So just imagine we have some solid stone pillars inside this uh, uh, sort of like a matrix, matrix, uh, matrix shape of thing and the, the pillar have different uh, height and we are standing on one of the pillar the rain starts to fall and the water level rise up uh, uniformly within this um, uh, grid and we can start to jump into the water when the water is uh, at the same level or uh, even above our current pillar so we, we fully submerged inside the water already um, that's the time we can get into the water and move around and let's say that uh, the pillar is a slippery or there is no clear way we can get up, climb up. So the only place we can go once we are in the water is any other place that's uh, equal to or below the water level. So for those locations, uh, the height, the elevation is above the waterline. We couldn't get there yet. So, and we are extremely fast swimmer. We can um, get uh, anywhere that we can reach ball in zero time. Uh, we starting from the top left and we want to find the, the least time that we can reach the bottom right. Uh, example, we have 0, 2, 1, 3. So it's a really little toy example. We're starting with 0. There's no way we can go. Uh, at time equal to 1, we can start to move around. So we basically connect this, this location with the one below. Uh, those two other locations are isolated by themselves. Uh, then we start to connect uh, with node 2, uh, value is 2, uh, time, time equal to 2. So we, we have this connected component be one larger. 3 is still outside this connected component. So there, there's no way we can swim from 0 to 3 at time equal to 2 because uh, 3 is not uh, in the same component that 0 belongs to. Uh, t equal to 3, uh, we can finally get there. So that's, uh, that's that. Looking at uh, a slightly larger example here, um, let's add some space in between indicating they are not connected. Uh, we start uh, at time 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, we can move freely among the first row. They are the they form a single connected component or a subset of uh, nodes where we can. Uh, you know, move around freely inside this uh, collection of uh, elements, nodes, locations, which whichever they, they all the same, they all mean the same thing. At time equal to five, uh, the connected components form an L shape, uh, but uh, the bottom right, it's uh, it's still not in this connected component yet. Uh, at time equal to six, we begin to see that uh, there is a, a newly merging connected component. Now we have uh, this one, it's growing larger and larger through time. Uh, at time, at the time point uh, 15, they are almost uh, connecting with each other. At time 16, uh, the two connected components will be merged into one bigger one. Uh, this 16 is sort of like a bridge. So after time, uh, at the end of uh, the time period uh, 16, if we do the query, uh, which cluster, which connected component zero belongs to, uh, this answer is the same as uh, which uh, connected component subset this uh, bottom right uh, element belongs to. So if they are belong the same, belong to the same, it means we can swim from zero to there in no time. So time time point sixteen is the answer to this problem. Um, yeah, so we can solve this by union find uh, every every time point. Uh, we will have one more node we can actually do connection with. Uh, so we'll just look around to see if there are other um, nodes around that uh, newly uh, available location that we can um, do a union operation with. And uh, after each time period, we'll just do a query uh, which uh, 
uh, which subset uh, uh, 0, 0 belongs to and which subset uh, m minus 1, m minus 1 belongs to. If they are the same, uh, we can declare this is the first time period that we can uh, actually swim from top left to the one right. So yeah, union fine, pretty simple. Um, so I'm just going to copy my templates here and do some modification. Um, I'm going for a sort of a more dynamic one. I'm, I don't want to pre-allocate uh, uh, n squared uh, locations here. Uh, the reason for that is um, I think this question is also possible to become a more dynamic one. Um, we're not necessarily at the each time period we're interested only be interested in looking at the 0, 0 and n minus 1, n minus 1. Uh, we can support in a query for any given two positions. Um, whether they are connected at the time point or not. Um, so, yeah, so for that reason, I, I actually want to um, have this to be more, more, uh, more dynamic rather than pre allocate everything. Um, yeah, so, so that's, that's that. Um, um, yeah, so this is just the standard uh, dynamic uh, uh, unified uh, code. <coughs> So uh, since that uh, I don't pre-allocate, I need a insert operation. So it's and not annotation. So at the time point T. If we have a new location we can introduce to this uh, union find data structure, we're going to do an insertion. When we do the insertion, uh, it's by itself a subset, so the parent is uh, itself, and the size for the subset containing that uh, is going to be one. So that's uh, the initialization for uh, introducing a new new node to our union find data structure. Uh, notice that. Uh, um, this is unnecessary. We can have this question to be more complicated uh, by having duplicate values. But uh, here we're just going to process the uh, locations sorted by their uh, cell value. So we're going to work with 00 first, 0 01, 0 02, 03, 04, and uh, 1, 4. Uh, you know, they're row and column numbers. We're going to sort uh, uh, those individual cells based on their cell values because. Uh, the cell values are corresponding to the time period uh, when it's uh, um, when when it becomes uh, reachable inside the water. Um, if the question becomes a little bit more complicated, we'll have duplicate values, meaning that uh, at any given time there could be multiple pillar that's uh, become submerged by uh, with the water. It will be much more fun. Um, so, um, yeah, this question is still uh, pretty uh, friendly to us in, in that respect. So uh, we're going to sort the, the location. We're going to uh, introduce locations to our union find based on their cell value order. Um, so uh, for that reason, do I need a sorted uh, thing? Um, yeah, Let, let's grab uh, a order um, or, or just uh, Logs. We do a reverse mapping with the cell value to the location mapping. The grid here, we have the row and column accessor to get the, the uh, elevation. We want to create a reverse mapping. Um, uh, call it uh, what? T to log. Um, yeah, I'll just call this here. So this is uh, the the order that we are going to uh, introduce locations to our union find, uh, and obviously we have to do one last thing before we start the looping, which is uh, to initialize a object, and uh, then uh, we're just gonna do a do a for loop.
right? Uh, the it's from zero to n multiplied by n subtracted by one inclusive. So we, we do this. Uh, we will get the location and uh, try to insert this location into our data structure. And then uh, we will look around uh, for the newly submerged location. Uh, is there some waterway around that uh, that uh, we can introduce it into other connected components? So if the adjacent value are not submerged in the water yet, uh, we do nothing. Otherwise, we will try to union union those two. And uh, after this uh, four directional check, we want to do a final check. Do we have zero zero and n minus one, n minus one both uh, submerged on the water? And uh, if they do, uh, we want to see, do they belong to the same connected component? So if that's true, uh, we can return this time point. So, so this is the the code. Let's see if it works. Uh, no, nope. uh, as usual. Hmm. Ah, okay. How stupid. Nope. Still nope. Uh, Find takes two element, uh, two position. Uh, what I have here is find. Ah, uh, I'm so sorry. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah. This is uh, the the the. Uh, this is uh, pretty much the code. Uh, I'm just gonna. Iterate over the locations according to their time, sorted by their uh, elevation, uh, visit them one, one at a time, and uh, try to union that into existing connected component. Uh, at the end of each time period, we're going to do this check. Do we have the top left and the bottom right submerged in the water? If it's uh, uh, reachable uh, in the water, we check uh, do we have a clear pass. Uh, the pass checking is by uh, checking if they belong to the same subset. Uh, so that's uh, the uh, solving this problem using union find. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's uh, this question. Oh, sorry, I forgot the analysis of the time and space. It's uh, pretty typical for union find. Um, so the, uh, in the worst case, uh, like uh, like this one. Uh, the time complexity is going to be linear with respect to, to, to the total number of elements inside here. Um, and uh, um, yeah, so yeah, basically we do, you see the code here. Uh, first we do one pass through all the locations to, to create this mapping, order of uh, the positions we uh, visit. And then we do a for loop uh, from zero to the total number of uh, cells within this two, 2D two grid. Uh, for every location, we do an insert and four potential unions. So both of those are almost a constant, uh, approximately constant. So in total, it's uh, uh, um, linear with respect to the total number of locations inside this 2D grid. In terms of uh, space, uh, this is uh, linear to the total number of elements. 
and these two mappings here are also linear with respect to the size of the grid. So yeah, so that's the question today.